So I have five <coughs> over 36 xy cubed. I'm going to leave a little space and write the denominator that I want. Okay, then we look and see what can I multiply by the denominator I have to get to the denominator I want. What's missing from here? How do I get 36 to 72? Multiply it by 2. How do I get from x to x squared? Do I need any to multiply any more x's in there? Times x. Okay, so x is not the same thing as x squared. I need one more x so that I'll have x times x will give me x squared. Do I need any more y's? No, I'm good with y's. Okay, so I'm multiplying by 1 in the form of 2x over 2x, and that gives me 10x. Okay, now second fraction, I have 1 over 24x squared y squared. I'll leave a little space, write the denominator that I want. What can I multiply times the denominator that I have to get to the denominator that I want? What's missing? What do I need for the numbers? 3. 24 times 3 will give me 72. Do I need any x's? No. No, I don't because I have x squared. I already have x squared, so I don't need any x's. Do I need any y's? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I only have two y's. I have y squared, but I need y cubed, so I need one more y. So I'm going to multiply by 1 in the form of 3y over 3y. And then multiply across the top, 1 times 3y is 3y. Okay. Now, all of my fractions have the same denominator. Okay, so now, that, now I have like fractions. So since they all have the same denominator, I can keep that denominator, 72x squared y cubed, and perform my operation across the top, 10x minus 3y. And then I do want to see if there's anything that I can simplify, but remember you can only cancel factors. Can I factor 10x minus 3y? No, so there's nothing I can do to simplify this one. Resist the temptation to cancel with the y's. Okay, this is it, this is our answer. fun, right? You guys look so happy. You're like, okay, you can only add and subtract things that are alike. Do we have like fractions? No, no we do not. So we're going to have to do something about that. What's the denominator on the four? One. One. All right, so first thing I want to do is find the least common denominator. The least common denominator has to represent all of the factors, so I need to have the x. Now, the second fraction has x minus 5. I can't just put in a minus 5 on here. I have to have that whole factor, x minus 5. So the least common denominator is x times x minus 5. You always want to be able to multiply by something to get to the LCD. And it's a common mistake. People think x minus 5 is the least common denominator, but I can't take x times something, x times something to get x minus 5. Okay, so my least common denominator is x times x minus 5. Next step is to write each fraction with that common denominator. So I start with 6 over x, leave a space, write the denominator that I want. What can I multiply times what I have to get to what I want? What's missing? X minus 5. <clears throat> right. So I'm going to multiply by x minus 5 over x minus 5. Okay, so on the top, 
I'm going to have 6 times the quantity x minus 5. Now I'm going to have to distribute at some point. Okay, do you want to distribute now or later? No. Now? Okay. So that would give us 6x minus 30. Now my second fraction, I have 3x over x minus 5. Leave a space, write the denominator that I want. What do I multiply by this to get to what I want? What's missing? x. So I multiply by x over x. So on the top, I have 3x times x is 3x squared. right here? Well, I could, but that would put me back to where I started again. And what I'm trying to do in this step right here is write everything with the least common denominator. So if I canceled out the x minus 5, I wouldn't have the denominator x times x minus 5 anymore. If I canceled it out, I would undo all of the work that I just did. Try to resist canceling until you get to the end. Okay, try to resist canceling until you get to the end. All right, so my third fraction is 4 over 1. Leave a little space. Write the denominator that I want. What do I have to multiply by what I have to get what I want? So much fun. All of it, right, so I have to do x times x minus 5. Okay. So on the top, I have 4x times x minus 5. If you want to distribute that now, that would give us 4x squared minus 20x. Now, all of my fractions have the same denominator. So, I can write all my fractions with that denominator and perform the operation across the top. So the first fraction turned into 6x minus 30. Okay, actually, I don't need the parentheses. Then I have plus, the second fraction turned into 3x squared. And then I have minus. Now, when you have a minus, you do need to be careful that you subtract everything. So I am going to put parentheses around the 4x squared minus 20x. Okay, so you do need to, when you have a minus, you do need to be careful that you distribute that minus to everything. So I end up with 6x minus 30 plus 3x squared minus 4x squared minus a negative is plus 20x. And that's over my least common denominator. Okay, now I'm going to combine like terms and I'm going to go ahead and put it in descending order and make it look pretty. So 3x squared minus 4x squared is negative 1x squared. 6x plus 20x is 26x and then minus 30. And uh, that's all over my LCD. So I have negative x squared plus 26x minus 30 over x times x minus 5. Okay, now we do need to see if there's anything we can do to simplify that. Can I, am I going to be able to factor the top so that I'll be able to cancel something? Okay, if you're not sure, give it a try. When in doubt, factor it out. <coughs> If you're positive, if you know that you're not going to be able to do anything, then you can leave it like it is. But if you're not sure, give it a try. So first thing I would do in this case would be to factor out the negative 1, which would leave me with a positive x squared minus 26x plus 30. And that makes it a little easier for me to see that I'm not going to be able to factor it out anymore. So you can leave your answer like this.
If you did factor out the negative one, that's okay also. That would also be an acceptable answer. At least our x squared minus x minus six. only add and subtract things in our life. Do we have like fractions? No. No, we do not. So we're going to have to bend them to our will and make them into like fractions. So the first thing I need to do is find the least common denominator. Now you could just multiply x squared plus 2x minus 15 times x squared minus x minus 6 and that would give you a common denominator but it might not be the least common denominator and when you have variables in there your life can get really miserable. I mean more miserable than you already think it is. It can get really miserable if you don't have the least common denominator. So I'm going to invoke the motto for this chapter, factor first. Okay, because if I can find anything, if I can break it down into factors, it'll be easier for me to find the least common denominator. So I can factor x squared plus 2x minus 15. Greatest common factor is 1, the trinomial, so I'm going to use reverse FOIL or the AC method in grouping. First terms multiplied to x squared, last terms multiplied to 15, signs are different. Okay. If you haven't already, go ahead and factor x squared minus x minus 6. Okay, so I got x minus 3 times x plus 2, whatever the order of your factors doesn't matter as long as you have those factors there. My least common denominator has to represent all of the factors, so I need to have all of the factors from the first fraction. I need to have the x plus 5 and the x minus 3. Then I look and see, is there anything that I, else that I need for the second fraction? Is the x minus 3 already there? Mm -hmm. It is, so I don't need it again. What about x plus 2? Mm -hmm. I don't have that one, so I do need the x plus 2. So my least common denominator is x plus 5 times x minus 3 times x plus 2. Okay. Now the next step is to write each fraction with the common denominator. Okay. I'm going to condense the notation a little bit. So if, it, if, um, if it, you find it helpful to write it all out like this, then you can keep doing that. Do you want me to keep doing that? Yeah? Okay, all right. So uh, my next step is to change each fraction so that it has the LCD. So I have x plus 6 over x plus 5 times x minus 3. Leave a little space. Write the denominator you want. What can I multiply times the denominator that I have to get to the denominator that I want? What's missing? X plus, two. X plus 2. So I multiply by x plus 2 over x plus 2. Okay, now I'm going to multiply across the top. x plus 6 is at home together in parentheses along with the same as the x plus 2. So when I multiply across the top, I'm going to have to use FOIL. So I'm going to have to use the distributive property to multiply it out. Okay. So x times x is x squared. Outside is plus 2x. Inside is plus 6x. And last is plus 12. <coughs> Questions? I see some furrowed brows. Okay. Next fraction is x minus 5 over x minus 3 times x plus 2. 
leave a little space, write the denominator that you want. What can I multiply times the denominator that I have to get to the denominator that I want? What's missing? X plus 5. X plus 5. So I multiply by X plus 5 over X plus 5. Okay. Along the top, I'm going to have to use FOIL and multiply that out. If you notice that we do have the same terms but opposite signs in the middle, these are conjugates. So we could use a conjugate shortcut, or you could just multiply it out, collect like terms, you'll end up with x squared minus 25. Okay, so now all of my fractions have the same denominator, so I can write the denominator on the bottom there. Okay, and if you want to save yourself a little bit of writing, you can just write LCD. Okay, so I'm not done with the problem yet. While I'm working through the problem, I'm just going to write LCD to hold the place. So along the top, the first fraction was x squared plus 8x plus 12. And then I'm subtracting x squared minus 25. And remember, when you're subtracting, you need to make sure that you subtract every term. So I need to put parentheses around what I'm subtracting. Okay, when you're adding, it doesn't matter if you have the parentheses there, but when you're subtracting, it does. So I distribute the minus, I'll have x squared plus 8x plus 12 minus x squared plus 25, and that's all over the LCD. And then combining like terms, I get 8x plus 37, and because I think I'm getting close to the end, I'm going to write my denominator back in there. Okay, i got to look back and see what it was where I wrote it down. It was x plus 5 times x minus 3 times x plus 2. Okay. Is there anything that I can do to simplify that? Can I factor 8x plus 37? No. So this is it. It's my 